Holy crap, this might actually be a two-man lift. Hey, uh, Ed! <laughs> Holy crap, this is really heavy. <laughs> Here it is. Oh, full marks for presentation, ladies and gentlemen. What am I looking at? Three power adapters. Oops. Oh, damn. Okay, there we go, there we go. Just need leverage. This is already a super weird computer. This is not how you're supposed to open it. We're opening it backwards, but the computer is backwards. Look, the mounting ears for the server rack, apparently this is a rack mount, are where the, the front I, the back I.O. comes out of the front of the computer. What am I even looking at? So here's the handles. Here's your power button, your reset button, whatever these plates are for, whatever this display does, and your I.O. plate is all at the front of the computer. So what's at the back of the computer? <laughs> we got we got water cooling for days here, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. This is the Camino RM, and it shouldn't surprise me that much that the internal layout of this thing is unlike any server I've ever seen before, because these are the same crazy folks that brought us, yes, that thing, that super, super tiny liquid-cooled small form factor gaming rig. Inside this box is apparently a Threadripper processor, for 2080 Ti's and presumably enough power and cooling to take care of all of that. And I don't know if you guys have the context for this or not, but here's a Linus hand for scale. This is a really compact little server. Wait, what? Where are the graphics cards at? Why are there three power supplies? What am I even looking at here? Oh, what the crap? Andy, I need Allen keys. An Allen key, ladies and gentlemen, courtesy of Andy. The Andy man can. This machine is knocking futz. Let's walk through what we're looking at here. Starting at the ugh, back, we've got a triple 120 millimeter radiator with a quite dense fin stack. So this is optimized for high airflow fans. We don't have any fans directly mounted to it. Instead, We've got three Noctua industrial PPC fans. So these are 3000 RPM monsters that have this kind of uh, redirection piece here so that it directs it up and through the radiator, which also has a little bit of kind of soft tape here that's presumably to help seal up the back of the chassis. As for the components inside, rather than take a traditional server approach and go with a single but redundant high power power supply, like a 1600 watt power supply or something like that, Camino has opted <laughs> to go with three SFX 750 watt, more like small form factor desktop power supplies with their own label. So they've presumably got like an OEM manufacturer or ODM manufacturer building these for them. Next up, we've got our motherboard. So this is a Zenith 2 Extreme Alpha or whatever it's called. This is a top of the line Threadripper board. Threadripper CPU, I believe it's a 32 core model, but that's sort of irrelevant because the focus when building a machine like this was on GPU. And where are they? Where are the graphics cards, Andy? Yeah, they are. This Andy guy, he doesn't miss a trick, ladies and gentlemen. So here on the front of the board, we've got three of Camino's super cool PCI Express risers. So these are PCIe 16X right here, and then they've actually got two, each of them handling eight of the lanes, two of these thin PCI Express extension cables. Now, normally when you build a small form factor machine, the PCI Express riser is like, it's, it's thick. It's like a, a, a ribbon style cable. But these apparently have good enough signal integrity to handle these links over a, a rounded slash sleeved connector here. 3200 megahertz, these are 32 gig sticks. So that's 256 gigs of RAM. This puppy is maxed out. Here, oh, it's so heavy though. Okay. Ah. 
Ow. Right here is our water cooling reservoir. They've got a really nice handy dandy little cutout. I haven't looked at the water cooling much here. So our CPU block, which also handles cooling the VRMs here, uh, goes down to what seems to be some kind of a manifold or splitter. Our radiator goes down under the motherboard tray and then our reservoir is over here with a nice handy dandy little cutout. Uh, CPU block seems to be a custom design that cools both the CPU and the power delivery on the motherboard. Let's go find some graphics cards here, shall we? Moving this thing around, it's warming me up. LTTstore.com, suck us. Why would the manufacturer of a system like this have the graphics card I.O. at the front of the case, where people would be pretty unlikely to plug in a graphics card, and especially why would they put the, the plugs behind these like little cover plates? That's a weird thing to do, right? Oh my God, that is so cool. I haven't seen this in so long. So way back like 10 years ago, Nvidia did a dual GPU graphics card where it actually had two PCBs. So one on the slot side and then one over on where would normally be your intake fan. And then they had a cutout in the PCB for the fan to draw air in from both sides and then blow it down the back of the card. Now, when manufacturers went to water cool this thing, they had no choice because the two PCBs had the components mounted facing each other in. They had no choice but to create a block that sat in between them and had the water channel go in and out and it had cold plates, like copper plates, on both sides. That is what Camino has done here to create this incredibly slim design that actually has two RTX 2080 Ti's in about the space you would normally have a single one. Before I open this up, I wanna tell you about our sponsor, Private Internet Access. Private Internet Access allows you to access services and websites as though you're in a different country. It encrypts all your internet traffic and uses a safe, protected IP. You can connect up to five devices at once with clients for Windows, Mac OS, Linux, iOS, and Android, and if you check out our offer down below, it's $39.95 for a full year and you'll get two months free. So go check it out. Now, we'll take this off. Oh wow, that's actually not bad in terms of accessibility. <laughs> there they are. I found you, I got you. Inlet, outlet. That goes to this right here onto the CPU, out to this side of this, okay? And then it must also go into the GPUs, into this side of this, where it goes, comes back to, ah, yeah, okay. So the CPU is getting about half of the flow coming out of the pump, and the GPUs are sharing about half of the flow. Now, I don't actually expect that to be a terrible problem, because GPUs, while they do actually consume a lot of power and therefore output a lot of heat, they're really, really large, and it's a little bit easier to draw the heat off of them. One of the reasons they run so hot is that they have these tiny, slim coolers on them with these really inefficient fan designs because they have to go in PCI Express slots instead of being able to have a big thing plonked on them like a CPU does. One thing I can't really wrap my head around right now is how they actually put this whole assembly in or take it out. But we can leave that for another day. We're gonna do a full Linus Tech Tips video on how this machine performs for its true purpose, which, ah, oh, as I alluded to before, doesn't require the GPUs to even have their plugs accessible because apparently it's intended as like a, a network accessible rendering server. It's a little curious to me that they didn't bother to at least allow you to install any expansion slots not a big deal because this is one of those high-end uh, desktop boards that happens to have 10 gigabit ethernet, which is good enough for uh, putting a rendering load onto it and then taking the results back. So your bottlenecks are gonna be elsewhere in the system. You know, like these guys really impressed me with that small form factor machine, but I do have my doubts. Just three 140 millimeter fans cooling four 2080 Ti's and a thread ripper. Get subscribed to Short Circuit for more fun unboxings like this one. Actually, I can't promise we'll have too many like this one. This is really unique, but uh, definitely, definitely more videos.